Hello and welcome back to another edition of Geek Girl TV. As usual, I'm your Geek Girl host, Steve Park, and as you well know, my theme song was created by The Days, which you can check out at myspace.com slash The Days Girls. And this is episode number 58. Speaking of 58, did you know that science fiction writer Octavia E. Butler died February 24, 2006 at age 58? She was the first science fiction author to win the MacArthur Fellowship. She persisted in a profession dominated mostly by white males, sometimes having to work odd jobs such as potato chip inspector to get by. Her professional works include the Pattern Master series, the Xenogenesis trilogy, and the Parable of Power series. Now, as you probably already know, last weekend kicked off the beginning of summer blockbuster hits with Iron Man. And I have a special guest review that I know you're going to love. Hi, I'm Jen from JenReviewsMovies.com and you're watching Geek Girl TV. Today I'm going to talk to you about the latest greatest superhero to hit the big screen. I'm talking about Iron Man. It's already raked in over $200 million worldwide and critics are raving. Let's take a look at why. They say the best weapon is one you never have to fire. I prefer the weapon you only need to fire once. That's how Dad did it, that's how America does it, and it's worked out pretty well so far. To peace. You have to tomorrow to assemble my missile. I'm working on something big. stars reformed bad boy Robert Downey Jr., Jeff Bridges, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Terrence Howard. It's not exactly your common everyday superhero cast, now is it? Well then again, this isn't your common everyday average superhero film either. It's the first film from Marvel Studios, and I believe thanks to the success of Iron Man, it won't be the last. Robert Downey Jr. stars as Tony Stark, you're not so average everyday type superhero character. He's basically an arms dealer, a rich boy, arrogant as hell, and you, you just cannot like him when he comes on the screen when you first see him. You want to strangle him. It's really, really refreshing to see this. You know, you've got all of these woe is me superheroes. So here he is, this guy with so much bravado that even when terrorists capture him, he still cracks jokes. It's great to watch. One thing I can say about the new Iron Man film is that it once and for all signifies that Robert Downey Jr. is back. He dipped his toes in the water with Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, but right now he is on the screen with a big, big bang. I look forward to seeing Robert Downey Jr. in his next film, Comedy Tropic Thunder, also starring Ben Stiller. One of the things I really loved about Iron Man is that it never takes itself too seriously, and it's hell of a lot of fun. If you really like action movies in general, and you're kind of curious about comic book films, you will definitely like this. And you will definitely, definitely like this if you're into Marvel comics, like the Avengers, of course, Iron Man, etc., etc. You won't get as much bleeding heart material in this one, but you'll get plenty of laughs and a lot of action. Plus, there's a couple of little extra characters in there that you're not going to want to miss. Iron Man is out at cinemas now. You can check my review of Iron Man at genreviewsmovies.com and make sure you keep watching Geek Girl TV. Thanks, Jen. That was awesome. Mankind has always dreamed of having super strength, power, and the ability to fly. And Iron Man is the story of Tony Stark, a man who achieves that dream through technology. Well, if you've ever dreamed that you could have the powers of Iron Man, you just might be able to and sooner than you think. 
In 1987, a retired army ranger with a broken back developed his life suit, a device designed to assist with his physical therapy and help him walk again. And in fact, Reed has been so successful that in 2003, Reed was able to wear an updated version in a 5K foot race. Meanwhile, the Japanese have been developing HAL-3, which helps human beings carry heavy loads. One of its specific goals is to help nurses lift elderly patients. And if you were wearing this version of HAL-3, you would resemble Blizzard's StarCraft Ghost. But the most advanced supersuit is currently the Raython Sarkos XOS, designed by Steve Jacobson on military funding. This exoskeleton is designed to give our boots on the ground superpowers of strength and endurance. I know, I know, none of these supersuits fly. And without the ability to fly, you're not so much an Iron Man, but more an Incredible Hulk. But it may surprise you to know that jetpacks, working jetpacks, have been around for even longer. In 1952, the U.S. military started development of a working rocket pack and managed to get something that hovered a little bit. Then, according to Scientific American, in 1959, the U.S. Army contracted Bell, who managed to develop a rocket pack that in its first test flight at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, managed to fly a vague 7 to 10 miles. These and modern jet packs are hydrogen peroxide powered to be safe and non-toxic to the drivers. However, even modern jetpacks are limited to 30-second flight, which is one of the reasons why the military never put them into production. That, and they're too heavy and noisy to serve much of a practical purpose. It's hydrogen peroxide that has its limitations. The more fuel you carry, the heavier the tank. And the physics work out that it's unlikely that a hydrogen peroxide tank will ever produce flight for more than a minute. But that means there's potential in other fuels. The most famous real-life rocketeer is Dan Schlund, or, as he's better known, the Rocket Man. Part of the Screen Actors Guild, the Rocket Man performs stunts for Hollywood and has performed at live events all over the world. But the coolest of which was probably when he got to fly in as Boba Fett at the Star Wars 30th anniversary celebration. Although it's still no Iron Man, yet, our brave new world is quickly turning science fiction into science fact. True to geek form, however, most of my superpowers still come from a can. Sort of like Popeye, only instead of spinach, it's Red Bull. There's so many energy drinks out there that I'm thinking of expanding my repertoire. Maybe reviewing one an episode, sort of like Dignation does with beer? In addition to the reviews of geek toys and gadgets that I have in store for you. So if you have a favorite energy drink that you'd like for me to try, or you sell a product that you'd like to send me a sample of, contact me directly at geekgirl at clevermedia.com. And as always, I'd like you to send your questions, comments, and feedback to the same address, geekgirl at clevermedia.com, so I can make you a better show. So until next time, Excelsior! Meow! Oh, you're still here. Catch you next time.